Barkeep's struggling to keep up with all the heroes that are pouring into town. They're stopping in for some quick grub and a pint of ale, and they're specific about what they want. But the best thing about adventurers is they always pay well. So if you get them the food they want, you'll be swimming in gems in Dungeons and Dragons, The Yawning Portal, which was published by Avalon Hill, who helped sponsor this video. Hi everybody, my name is Nick Murphy of the Brothers Murph, and we are here with Board Game Geek. Well, I've got ham in the smoker and ale on the tap, so let's get this game down to the table to learn how to play The Yawning Portal. In Dungeons & Dragons The Yawning Portal, players are barkeeps at the famous Yawning Portal Tavern. You will be placing the finest delicacies on the table, but someone's gotta eat, so you'll also be playing heroes at the table, hoping to match their orders to the food that's on the table. Matching food will grant the player gems, which will be your biggest hit of points. But before we get into all that, let's go over the setup. You will assemble the main board according to the number of players. You will always use the two end boards, but you will add one center board for two players, two for three players, and three center boards for four players. Sort the hero cards into four decks according to their card backs, shuffle them, and place them on the game board on their matching symbols. Shuffle the objective cards, draw five, and place them face up next to the game board. Give each player one hero card of each color, one action tile of each color, and a reference card. Make sure the tiles are on their front sides. The front side will be the side with the food token as the first action. The player who ate something last is the first player. The last player in turn order will place out the starting food. The player will place these food items for two players, these for three players, and these for four. These must be placed on the table sections of the center boards, but the player may choose what goes where. Once this is done, you have finished the setup. Play will start with the first player and then proceed clockwise. On their turn, a player will choose one of their four action tiles, use it, and then flip it over to its opposite side. As you can see, this side has actions as well, so when you use the tile again on a subsequent turn, you will do these actions and then you'll flip it back over to its front side. The main goal in taking actions is to get the right food in the right place for the visiting adventurers. Let's quickly go over what's on these cards as the game revolves around them. Each hero has a food order at the top of their card. This will be any variations of blue quippers and chips, green vegetable platters, red smoked ham, and yellow tankards of ale. When you place a hero at the table, you will immediately activate their power shown on the black banner. These powers may allow you to remove hero cards from the tavern, manipulate the food on the table, flip your inactive action tiles, and more. After you activate the action on the card, you will gain gems for matching the food positioning on their order to the food positioning on the table. So in this case, if I played this Dwarf Paladin here, I would gain one blue gem and one yellow gem for matching these two food types. Note that the order has to match exactly, so I would not gain this red gem because the smoked ham is not in the correct place. If you match the entire order perfectly, you will gain the card's perfect match bonus, which is shown in the banner in the top right of the card. These will usually be extra gems or drawing hero cards. Note that whenever you draw cards, you may draw from any hero deck. When a card's perfect match bonus is completed, that hero is full up with yummy food and their card is then flipped down. Note that face down cards are not removed unless an action removes them. We assume they're just passed out of the table. On the back of the card, it shows the hero's gem type. At the end of the game, you will score points for how many gems you have of that type multiplied by the number of face down cards of that type. Okay, now that we've gone through the cards and we know how they work, let's go through the action tiles and what they do. On your turn, you will choose one of your action tiles to use. You will activate the tile from left to right and you must do all of the actions. If one or more of the actions are not possible for you to do, you cannot use that action tile. Let's start with the blue tile. This is the front side and note that the actions on the back side are shown at the bottom of the tile for reference. First, you will place a blue quippers and chips token. When placing food at the table, you may place it anywhere as long as it's adjacent to at least one other food token. This action has you swap two food tokens on the table. Note that when you're placing or swapping food tokens, if you then make a perfect match on a hero, you will gain the perfect match bonus on their card, and then you'll flip that card over. This action allows you to play a hero to an empty space on either side of the table. As discussed, when you play a card, you will do the card's ability and then gain gems for matching food. Once you've finished your actions, your tile will flip over. This action here allows the player to play an enchant food potion onto a hero card that does not already have one. 
When you do this, you will immediately gain the perfect match bonus on the card, but you do not flip the card over. Note that you must have an enchant food potion in your personal supply to do this action. On the green tile, you will place a vegetable platter token and then draw two hero cards. On the back side, you will gain one white diamond gem. The white diamond gems are wild and must be immediately assigned a color upon gaining and may not be changed afterwards. So when you get one, you will decide if it's a blue, green, yellow, or red gem and you will add it to that pile in your supply. This action allows you to remove a card from the tavern and this card may be face up or face down. On the red tile, you will place a smoked ham token, remove a card, and then play a card. On the back side, you will play a hero card and then you will remove any food token from the board. Though note that you may not remove a food token if it's the last food token of that color on the table. On the yellow tile, you will place a tankard of ale token and then you'll gain an enchant food potion to your supply. On the back side, you will play a hero card and then you may turn in one gem to gain two gems of any color. Note that this may not be done with a white diamond. And that is all of the actions, but before we talk about how the game ends, let's quickly discuss the objective cards laid out at the beginning of the game. There are five objective cards in each game and it's a race to get them. All the objectives will require you to have a certain amount of the object listed. As soon as a player completes an objective, they will gain that card and each objective will be worth five points at the end of the game. The game will end once the rightmost and the leftmost food slots are filled with a token. When that happens, the current player will finish their turn and then all other players will get one more turn. Then we move to end game scoring. When the game is over, the players will first count their gem scores. They will do this by multiplying the amount of a single gem type by the number of card backs at the table with the same gem symbol, including the decks of cards. So in this case, we have six red gems and there are three red hero cards face down at the table, so our red gem score is 18. Then we move on to blue, which we have four of, and there are two blue heroes face down, so our blue gem score is eight. Each player does this for all four gem types. Now we move on to bonuses. The player with the highest amount of any single gem color gains an extra 10 points. Next, the player with the most complete sets of all four gems gains 15 points. If any players are tied for these bonuses, all players gain the victory points. Lastly, players will score five points for every objective card they've gained. And at the end of scoring, the player with the most points will win. This game is all about hero and food management. The state of the table is always changing with new heroes going in, food swapping around, and you've gotta try and make it work for the heroes that are in your hand. And then you need to try to make sure you can have a big gem multiplier at the end of the game. And if the Yawning Portal seems like a game you'd enjoy, make sure to check it out and learn more. And until next time, I've been Nick Murphy, and that is how to play Dungeons and Dragons The Yawning Portal. Have a great day.